Achondroplasia is a condition that affects the growth plates. Slowing down the rate of bone growth, which is most apparent in the limbs. This results in a type of short stature called dwarfism, a condition where people are, when fully grown, shorter than 4 foot 10 or 147 centimeters on average. There are many kinds of dwarfism caused by many different conditions. However, 70% of cases are caused by achondroplasia, which occurs in about one of every 26,000 to 40,000 births. Generally, Children with achondroplasia grow up to have good health, intelligence, and lifespans. However, many will need medical treatment to relieve pain, increase mobility, increase their quality of life, and address other medical concerns. To understand the effects of achondroplasia, let's review how our bones grow. The bones in our arms and legs grow from a special area called the growth plate also called the physis or epiphyseal plate, which is made up of soft cartilage. As we grow, the growth plate slowly creates new hard bone through a process called ossification. Ossification begins when cartilage cells start to divide. As more cells divide, they push a stack of cells outward. The cells grow larger and create a hard structure around them, making small pockets for new bone cells to grow in their place. In this way, the bones of our arms and legs grow in length. This continues until about the age of 14 to 15 for girls and 15 to 17 for boys when the growth plate shuts down or fuses. Bone growth is controlled by our DNA. DNA is our body's instruction manual and individual instructions are called genes. You can think of bone growth as a paving truck. Slowly laying down new bone. Each part of the truck is controlled by different genes. Some make the truck speed up by pressing on the gas pedal, and others slow it down by putting on the brakes. One gene that slows it down is called FGFR3. In achondroplasia, however, the FGFR3 gene becomes changed or mutated, causing it to break harder than it should. This causes fewer cartilage cells to divide in the growth plates, which slows ossification down, resulting in shorter arm and leg bones and shorter stature. In the spine, instead of using growth plates, each vertebra grows from special points called ossification centers. They form the strong, bony spinal canal that protects our spinal cord. However, in achondroplasia, bone growth is slower between the ossification centers here in an area called the neurocentral synchondrosis, causing the spinal canal to become narrow. In the same way, the opening at the base of the skull, called the foramen magnum, can be more narrow as well. Genetic mutations often happen spontaneously, which means randomly and without a clear cause. They are not caused by anything the parents did, the environment, or any other factors. 80% of cases of achondroplasia occur spontaneously with no family history. However, parents with achondroplasia can pass it on to their children. 
As a new parent or caregiver, it's helpful to understand the normal, common physical traits of achondroplasia. Typically, these traits don't cause any pain and don't require any medical intervention. The average height for women is 4 foot 1 or 124 centimeters and around 4 foot 3 or 130 centimeters for men. The short stature is mainly due to the shorter length of the arms and legs, not the length of the torso. Typically, the bones of the upper arm and upper leg, called the humerus and femur, tend to be shorter than the bones of the forearm and lower leg, an appearance known as rhizomelia. Some people may have bowed legs, called genovarum, where the knees are farther apart than they typically should be. This is usually benign in the majority of cases. In the back, many people have a hump, usually right below the ribcage. This is called kyphosis, which is due to an outward curvature of the spine. The vast majority of cases of kyphosis are benign and resolve by the age of four or five years. In the hands, there may be extra space between the fingers, sometimes called trident hands. The forehead may be slightly larger, called frontal bossing. The head may be enlarged, called macrocephaly. The bridge of the nose may be flattened, and teeth can become crowded. These are the common, normal traits of people with achondroplasia. Achondroplasia does have several medical concerns, however, that typically need to be addressed. This includes frequent ear infections, sleep apnea, and problems in the skeleton. We will explain these in detail in the next video and discuss treatment options. There is no cure for achondroplasia, and regardless of treatment, most children will grow up to be shorter than average. Life expectancy is not usually affected by achondroplasia. Children may have delayed physical milestones at first, but they catch up with time. They may need accommodations for their short stature at school, but achondroplasia does not affect their mental abilities or their potential to have a great career or start a family. We are proud to be associated with Little People of America, or LPA, a nonprofit dedicated to providing support, education, and global awareness to issues affecting people of short stature and their families. At Children's Hospital Colorado, our multidisciplinary experts are front runners in the latest advancements in research and care of achondroplasia. We will work with you and your child to determine what treatment options are best for them. To learn more, call us at this number, click the links here, or visit our website by clicking the links in the description below. You can also watch our next video about common medical concerns and treatment options for achondroplasia by clicking here, or look for the link in the description.